Excellent presentation, brother. Made me think, stirred up my thinking about these things. And, and I have often, over the years, and uh, spoken about this and uh, have given a lot of thought to it. And uh, my progress and maturity and understanding has confirmed this again and again. that the central issue here in the revelation of God is his wisdom. His wisdom and his goodness in that wisdom. Now this question that Brother Jason has presented to us or Brother Paul has presented to us through Brother Jason God's wisdom is at the core of it. Does God know what he's doing? Is he really God? Or not? I mean, if Israel could just turn up their nose at God and turn their back and walk away, is God really God? Who's in control here anyway? See, that's the real question. Is God really God? Does he know what he's doing? Has he blown it? Did he fumble the ball? He started out heading in one direction and, and he tripped and fell down. He doesn't really know what he's doing, does he? See, that's the, that's the issue here that Brother Paul is dealing with. If, if Israel has turned their back on God and doesn't have to do what God says, well, then God's not God. As he says he is. He, he may be powerful. He may be able to do lots of things, but he's just not God. And, of course, that's a lie from the pit. That is a lie. Let me read you some words of Brother Job here. Now remember, Brother Job didn't have a Bible. He didn't have any written revelation of these things like we do. Let me tell you, we're going to be held more accountable to God than he is. You better believe it. Here's a, here are some things that he said to his friends as they debated this matter of his personal circumstances. Here's part of his reasoning toward them about this. He says, Who knoweth not in all these things that the hand of the Lord has wrought this? You know, that's, that's what Brother Paul is saying in that section of his letter to Rome. God has done this. You have a question about the Jews? God has done this. It's not out of his control. He's managing all of this. So in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Doth not the ear try words and the mouth taste his meat? With the ancient is wisdom. Now when, when Brother Job uses that term ancient, he's referring to what Daniel called the ancient of days. He's not just talking about old men. He's talking about the ancient of days. With the ancient is wisdom and length of days understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaketh down and it cannot be built again. He shutteth up a man and there can be no opening. Behold, he withholds the waters. They dry up also. He sendeth them out. They overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leadeth counselors away spoiled and maketh judges fools. He looseth the bond of kings and girdeth their loins with a girdle. He leadeth princes away spoiled and overthroweth the mighty. He removeth away the speech of the trusty, taketh away the understanding of the ages. He poureth contempt upon princes and weakeneth the strength of the mighty. He discovereth deep things out of darkness, bringeth out to light the shadow of death. He increaseth the nations, destroyeth them. He enlargeth the nations and straineth them away. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth, causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way they grope in the dark without light. He maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. Now see, that affirms that God's in control of all of this. Job knew that long before there was any Bible. Long before there was any prophet. Long before Elijah and Elisha. Long before Isaiah. Long before John the Baptist. Job knew that. See, a lot of people don't know that today. A lot of people carrying their Bible into buildings this morning don't know those things that Job just spoke about the sovereignty of God in this matter of who is received into his presence and who is rejected 
That's what we're talking about. And that's, that's what we're all concerned about. I want to be there. I want to be able to go in and go out no more. Amen. You don't want to be turned away, do you? Forevermore. Into the pit. Into darkness. Everlasting darkness. In your heart. In your soul. Turned away from the Most High. And all of His goodness. And His kindness. The riches of His grace in the ages to come. See, we know all of these things because of this, the abundance of this revelation now. See? And Brother Paul was in the process of affirming this as Brother Jason concluded with these words about our own redemption, our own inclusion. If you want to, we like that word, don't we? Our generation especially, we like that word to be inclusive. We, well, God is more inclusive than anybody's ever been regardless of social status and wealth and other kinds of orientation that we'll not speak about this morning, okay? That's what the world wants to talk about, including everybody, one big happy family. That's, of course, unless you disagree with them. Then you're not included, are you? If you disagree with them, well, let me tell you, the Most High is the ultimate one with whom you'd better agree. Yeah. Amen. You better agree with Him. And this matter that you better agree with Him about is His own Son. In whom are all the promises of God. Yea and Amen, as a couple of the children read this morning. <laughs> yea and Amen, all the promises of God are in Him. So we better be, you see, we better be in line with Him. Amen. And these things about Israel, well, that's, that's part of that. It's a, it's a critical, crucial part of that. God swore by himself. See? That's Brother Paul's reasoning there in Hebrews. He swore by himself. There's no one greater by whom he could swear. He swore by himself. I will, surely I will bless you. Blessing, I will bless you. He said there in what we call Genesis 22. After Abraham took Isaac down off the altar and replaced him with the ram that was caught in the thicket. But we all know that no one took the son down off the cross, did he? No, he stayed right there. He went all the way through to the end and spoke the words himself, it is finished. It is finished. So the father and the son wrought this great redemption, brought it forth to us, And now has declared, as Brother Jason said, you better believe it. And that's not just a euphemism. It's a commandment to believe. For you see, as he affirmed as well, and we do on a regular basis, acceptance with God has always been based upon faith. Always. Always. Adam and Eve were turned away from the garden because they did not believe. See? Cain was rejected because he did not believe. Not because he didn't offer a blood sacrifice. It's because he didn't believe. God has always received grain offerings, hasn't he? Cain offered a grain offering. God would have received that if he'd offered it in faith. But he didn't. You cannot please God without faith. And of course that faith is revealed. It's once for all delivered to his people. So from our perspective, that's the issue. Are you going to believe what God has said and what God has done? And that's the exhortation for us, brethren, to believe these things. This great wisdom of God, this deep wisdom that only he could reveal. No man could discover it. Original languages, finding some etching on a cave wall somewhere. It had to be revealed. And you have to believe that revelation. And we are glad to do so. Thank you, brother. You have some, you have some comments this morning, brethren, about these good things? There's far-reaching things we've yeah. spoken about this morning. Far-reaching. You have some comments, Brother Robert. 